Okay. Okay, welcome back everyone. I'm glad you wanted to learn more about um, some make file um, tips and tricks. So here's what we're going to be going over for, uh, in, in, in this part. There's four things um, I wanted to kind of address um, uh, real quickly. We have variables, wildcards, pat pattern substitutions, and implicit rules. Those I think are the most commonly used um, make file tricks to kind of make your um, uh, life easier, um, but there's plenty of, of several other things you could do. So um, once you kind of get the grips of these things, I, I, I suggest you kind of take a look at the other stuff you could do in make files. Um, so let's jump back to our this our make file. Um, the first thing you want be wondering, like these two commands, gcc c all main dot c and gcc c array list dot c, they're pretty much like always the same, right? It's always dash c and the name of the file, and then you generate the dot o file for that. Is there a way to kind of like avoid repeating that? Imagine I have like a hundred of these c files. Do I have to write like a hundred of these rules and then figure that out? Um, the answer, of course, is not. Um, uh, GCC has something called implicit rules. Those implicit rules are like the most commonly and widely used rules um, to generate common types. So one of those things is how to generate um, object files from C files. So one thing we could do is if I take out those two lines and I just rely um, on GCC to kind of figure things out for me. So let's just clean first and just type make. You can see that um, by default, uh, make file or, or make figured out what what it needed to run. Right? It it called CC, which is in this case it's the same as GCC. Um, for um, other reasons that we're not going to touch upon in this class, sometimes you might um, want to want to define CC to point to somewhere other than GC GCC um, in case you're compiling for a different architecture, for example, or what is known as cross compiling. But for for the the the, the, the like um, scope of this class, they're they're pretty much the same. Um, so it's going to pass the flag dash C um, and then it dash O all main dot O from all main dot C and then it's going to do the same from array list dot O array list dot C. All right, so that saved us two lines and if, if there were plenty of those things, um, we can actually even do things in, 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 a, in a better way. Okay, so can we do even better? Um, it turns out that we can. We can start defining our own variables as well. So the way you define a variable is you just type the name of the variable. Um, so let's say I want to define my object files, my objects, right? Um, so my object, it's the way you define a variable, you, you, you use um, colon and then equals. And then you can say my objects are all main.o and array list.o. And then instead of writing them down separately here, you can just do dollar um, and then the name of the variable between brackets. And then to actually expand objects into all main.o and raylist.o and then we do the same here and that kind of saves us the, the, the trouble of um, writing these, these things down. Okay, so um, again, let's do that. Just double check this works again. And there we go, right? We just used a, a variable to figure things out. Can we even go even better than this? It turns out that we can. You notice to generate um, these two object files, all main.o and raylist.o, we're kind of looking for everything that ends with a dot c and then replacing everything that ends with a dot c with a dot o. So can we, like, is there a way to automate this? Let's say I have, like, you know, 50 C files in my in my in, in my directory. Do I have to go ahead and write the 50 names in there, or would there be a better way to do it? Turns out that there is a better way to do it. Um, you could just say define a new variable called sources, and then use a built-in um, function called wildcard. So wildcard, you can pass to it a pattern, and then it will match anything that matches star means anything, and then dot C anything that ends with dot C, it will find that. So let's confirm this. Um, you can actually do, to print something out, you can use um, dollar parentheses evaluate um, info and then print expand um, uh, the, the variable sources. So let's save and see what happens if I do that. So you see I printed one line here 
which is automatically detected that I have two C files, ArrayList.C and ArrayList. Or, or all main data. So can I now use that to generate the objects? Of course there are. Um, and the way to do that, we're going to use um, a pattern substitution and the syntax for that is pat subst. Um, you can see the, the color of the keywords changes. Um, then the pattern that I want to detect, which is now we have to use a slightly different uh, syntax. It's, it's percentage.c rather than star.c. Um, the replacement comma the replacement is replace that with percentage dot o and do that for everything that is in the variable sources so let's double check that again objects and type make again and there we go um, objects now contains raylist dot o and all main dot o great so now we can we kind of have we avoided um, listing things for us can we do better? Of course we can. Um, can we make this shorter? Yes, we can. Um, so it turns out you can actually, um, there is a shortcut for this one because path sub pattern substitution, substitution does like a lot more powerful things than one with, yeah, what we actually need. And you can actually write it as equal percentage dot O. So what this means, it expands to the same thing we defined. Um, path sub pattern substitution, um, replace, um, percentage dot C with a percentage dot O on sources. So again, if we do that, we get the same op we, we get the same op. Awesome. So we figured out um, we got rid of our um, compilation commands or generation of the object file commands. We got rid of the um, you know figuring out what our lists are. There are two more things, a few more things that that we want to get rid of, right? Um, in here, like usually the target the name of the target is the same of the, as, as the name of the file that I want to generate so why do I have to type that twice and it turns out that you don't you can actually replace this with dollar at what this means dollar at is a variable that refers to the target name and I don't want to type dollar braces object again I can just use percentage and then the, the hat, small hat what this means is this is equivalent to everything that is here percent dollar um, or dollar at is the name of the target let's confirm again let's clean first and then make and there we go it figured out that gcc dash o dollar at dollar hat corresponds to just um, expanding all of that one. so let's clean up a little bit and uh, make sure that this looks good right we know how to figure out our sources we know how to um, figure out um, our um, um, turn them into um, our object files um, the final thing is there a way to kind of get rid of these two um, the problem with the problem we have here is that by default if I take out these lines so I'm just gonna comment them out if I do that still it's going to be able to figure out how to generate the files, but notice the problem now. If I touch ArrayList.h, I change ArrayList.h, make is not going to know that I need to recompile, right? Um, because I did not specify that for generating all main.o, I also depend on the header files. So is there a better way for us to actually do that? And of course there are. Um, and we're going to use a... a um, a feature of GCC that allows us to do that. So let's take a look. At look. Um, if I do GCC and I pass these flags, dash MMD and then dash MP, and I pass all main dot C. So there you go. What we get here is that um, I think, oh, uh, let me just do just that. Yeah. Um, so in here, I can see that it automatically generated for me the make file dependency rule right uh, it said that almain.o um, depends on almain.c and then on all of a bunch of header files that are dependent that are like in libc and then finally arraylist.h so is there a way to kind of merge this into make files of course there are so what we're gonna do we're gonna get rid of these two we're gonna create a third file called depths and then for this one, we're going to replace 
the dot um, C with dot D so dot D files are usually the ones that we generate using a command similar to GCC dash M all main dot C and we store them in dependency files um, we call these things and then I'm just gonna include dollar depths in my source code okay that's pretty much it the only thing I have to say now is I have to tell make to pass the M file or the the dash M flag to GCC um, when I'm compiling so whoops uh, okay so the way to do that is I can actually there is a variable that make refers to it's called C flags those are the flags that it by default are gonna pass to GCC or CC when it's compiling so I can use plus equals to kind of append to C flags and pass my own stuff dash MMD and dash MP and you notice they're a little bit different um, because now we're, we're gonna call everything in a single shot right we're not gonna do GCC dash C or GCC dash M and then bring things together we can do all of this in one shot so now I don't need the all again so because um, by default I'm just gonna run example.bin and if I uh, clean I think I'm missing something um, let's see at line one okay let's bring back our example.bin in here might be there's like an extra tab or maybe something like that yeah mm. let me f try to fix that and see what's going on ah so I figured that's what the problem was um, instead of here using um, the um, braces I have to use the parentheses to include other files into my make file so now I assume that this is gonna work uh oops i switched those two yeah there we go. clean there we go all right finally um so now um let's add the dot d files here as well so we can make sure we remove everything so make clean is going to remove everything okay and now if i type make boom i did not specify anything I did not try to do anything I wrote all of this weird syntax and there we go you got our um, binary and even to confirm that we have our dependencies correct so if I change array list dot h I recompile I recompile everything again everything that de depends on array list dot h is automatically um, figured out by uh, make and it's gonna make all of that um, happen magically and if you can if there there are the d files are already generated in there so if you go ahead and look at them you can see that um, all main dot o depends on all main dot c and array list dot h um, it kind of removed all of the 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 stuff we know by default in c, uh, libc and all of the other things because we use these these optimized new flags in here okay so here is the final um, file you'd wanna um, write I think you can make a few more um, like you can you don't have to save sources you could basically just write your wildcard in here directly so you save one more line if you want to um, but pretty much that's all you need to generate your your executable eventually um, you don't need to specify things by hand you don't need to dig through your source code you don't need to change things um, you know with a little make file magic you can generate your own executables so i hope you enjoyed um, um this and and some of the magic that you could do in make files um, and uh, that's pretty much everything we have for today um, you can submit this as your um, solution or um, you could just write flush out all the, the dependent the the um, dependencies i suggest you get comfortable with the dependencies first because when an, on when on your exam you have to write your own make file um, you don't want to have to like worry about all of these things now and run in the same problem that I, I did in here. Um, so I, I would suggest you kind of um, favor that first, get comfortable with that, and then move on um, to doing these things. All right, that's it for today, and I'll see you in the next session. Over and out.